Hello there, good afternoon. Um, I used to think 4 p.m. is good evening, <laughs> but I was corrected. That is still afternoon. So I'm coming um, about three minutes earlier than 4 p.m. because um, some people reached out to me and asked that when I come live, I should give time for them to join in live. That they usually get the notification when I'm about rounding up so i'm doing that from today i'm going to be coming live say three to five minutes before the kickoff time so that um facebook can send notification and before they check their notification they won't really miss the live audio so far i am grateful to everyone who has tuned in live and those who has cut the replay of the two days so far Welcome to So You Call Yourself a Decorator. I hope that title didn't get you, um, I would like to call it now, didn't ruffle your feathers. I did not mean to shade anyone. I'm, I do not mean to uh, belittle what you do. It's just a title that, <laughs> that I wanted to catch your attention and I'm sh glad it is doing just that. So welcome to episode three of So You Call Yourself a Decorator. My name is Bisi Odewale. I am an interior designer and an interior decorator. And this is for me to be able to... Hi, Shem Awolusi. Thank you for listening in live. Um, so this is this So You Call Yourself a Decorator is um, a platform that I'm using to reach out to um, intending interior decorators and designers and those who are already in business but they are um, finding it difficult to uh, build momentum in their business they are finding it difficult to um, scale up or grow as a newbie in the field and i'm using this platform also to let you know that we have a community of interior designers and decorators right here on facebook it's called the um, business school for interior decorators will be two next month so if you really want a community where you can rub minds where you can um, um, where you can have encouragement where you can access trainings and um, coaching where you can have your questions answered where you don't have to walk alone yes i cannot resist using that um, congratulations to all the liverpool uh, fans um I'm, I'm i'm so happy for you guys um i'm also happy for the my you fans i don't know why the my you fans are so uh crazy and they, they were around me yesterday they were the, the ones who were rejoicing the most i don't know what barcelona did to them so congratulations to both teams i'm happy that you guys got what you wanted um so like back to what i was saying it's 4 p.m so i have to go to what we have to say today so we started two days ago with clarity and that is just basically getting clear on what exactly you want from your business defining your own success success looks different to different people or is different to different people depending on what stage you are in your business i have been um, an inter a full-time interior decorator for for say five years plus now before then i've been doing a freelance and paid i was also um employed as an as, a, as an interior decorator slash designer but going into business full-time has been five years and now i have um, upgraded to being an interior designer so my definition of success is going to be different from someone who is just starting out those who i am actually trying to catch with these uh, broadcasts and this platform so you call yourself an interior decorator <laughs> oh so shame i want to see you're a you fan <laughs> see the way you're boogieing us in the comment section i'm happy for you guys all right so we started with clarity and we talked about mindset we talked about purpose we talked about you defining your success and also choosing to um set the pace set the tone for your business knowing that this is just the beginning and you're going to scale you're going to grow so your definition for success will keep changing as you grow what do i mean by that when you started out your definition for success is to get um, client to get so 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 and so amount of money to get um recognized to get known for what you do and get referred for jobs that could be your own definition for success which is just a generalized one i will want i will actually wish you have a specific definition for success uh, for me when i started um out fully in 2014 my definition for success was 
to be able to earn a minimum of 30,000 Naira with as in after tax um, profit and all of that 30,000 Naira to maintain myself to maintain to take care of my needs and also be able to pick some tabs pick some financial obligations around the house as a wife as a mother then but right now my definition for success has changed so you can see what i mean by defining your success as you grow as your business evolves as you stay consistently um um keep dishing out the best of your abilities and your skill sets and in your services and product offerings your definition for success will grow so now we're moving okay before i go to what i also want to say today um i was using uh, i was actually using my five points or my five step process of helping you really fine tune and put your business out there um something that will help you go from uh, not known to being really known and getting people calling on you to um to do business with you and it's called the game plan so the game plan consists of five different steps we have um we have the clarity which we which we covered on monday and yesterday and then we have discover your strength which we're starting with today and we will run with for the rest of the week and then the third step is structuring your business the next one after that is attracting your ideal clients and the last one is executing clients job i promise you if you are able to grasp everything i'm going to be teaching with all of these steps and apply them in your business you're going to begin to notice a considerable um, improvement and growth in your business and you want to really really um, put them into practice immediately because knowledge without um, application or without implementation is just a waste of space as far as i'm concerned so to what what we're co we're covering today discover your strength um i'm going to start with a story because what i want to actually talk about today is asking you a question what is in your hands whether you're just starting out thinking of starting or you've started and you're still trying to find your feet in business what is in your hands now this story is um they are popular stories if you are a bible scholar or you read the bible you are, you are going to be very familiar with these stories i want to talk about i want to quickly um summarize for you now there's a man called moses he was actually um it was, was born at a time where um his race his tribe were in um distress or were in jeopardy in fact he was the only surviving um person in his age group when he was born because at that time the king of the country where he resides had already released the decree that every son born of his own tribe must be thrown into a river but somehow somehow through a divine intervention he was rescued and he actually grew up in the palace of that same king that uh, released the decree and the reason why god preserved his life in that story was because he was supposed to be the one to liberate his um generation or his um, people his country his kinsmen his um, tribe from slavery now fast forward to many years later moses escaped from this country because he killed a member of um that's um he killed one of the servants or what we like one of the slave drivers of the king and he ran for his dead life because he felt he was going to be executed and he ran to a, a, another um settlement or another area uh, i think it's median i think and he became a shepherd he was watching the flock of his father-in-law he got married to the daughter of the man that um <coughs> took him in at that time so he was in charge of the man's flock he was taking care of the sheep the cattle and all of that and then one day when um, it was time for him to go fulfill the purpose for which he was created god appeared to him in the form of a burning bush and that is not even the, the reason why i'm telling this story. the story the reason why i'm telling this story was a question he was asked because after god told him everything he was going to he was to go do to go and set his people free under the rulership of pharaoh the king the country where they were where his people were slaves he told god that he was a nobody he was no like all of us when we want to do something or when we know we are supposed to do something we always come up with excuses i'm not good enough i i i don't have the um the resources needed i can't do this by myself what where people are going to laugh at me those kind of 
objections where he came up with all of those and God asked him what do you have in your hands he actually had a staff a staff is like a stick that he uses to control the sheep and the cattle he was taking care of and he said a, a staff and God told him to throw that on the ground and when he did the staff turned into a stick a snake now fast forward to this remember I said I'm summarizing I'm not telling you the, the details of the story now this staff in the hands of Moses performed so many many unbelievable feats while he went to fulfill the purpose for which God spoke with him that day and sent him back to his people he made it, it was the same staff he, he used to part the Red Sea it was the same staff he used to um, strike a rock to create water when his people were dying of thirst it was the same staff he used to even before he was able to take his, his people away to liberate them from slavery, it was the same staff that used to perform all the miracles they did that are known as the Ten Plagues of Egypt today. If you, if you are an historian or you want to read it, you can just Google it. It was that same staff he used to do all of those. Now that's one person, Moses. There are different other people like that. There's a, even somebody um, uh, somebody else who is, um, um, who's, um, what's, what's that a name again? Uh, I think I put it down so a, a widow, yes, a widow who didn't have a husband, and at that time, um, the the there was famine in their land. That's um, where they lived. There, there was famine, and she just wanted. She was just picking sticks with her son on one day to go and make food with what was left, the last meal she had to eat, and she her, her plan was to eat the meal with her son and then go lie down. Or, and just wait for death to come thicker because that was the last meal she had and fortunately for her she ran into a man of God or a prophet of God which we call a man of God in this present day and the man asked her to make him a meal because he was hungry and this lady objected and was like this is all I have I was actually planning to make this food for myself and my son so that when we eat we can just wait for death to come and all of that and this man said don't worry make me something out of what you have first and then just do as you're told and she did that and she and the man asked her what do you have she said she has just a cruise of oil a cruise of oil is like um like a small jar of oil left in her house and the man told her to go borrow so many containers like drums um um uh, containers bottles everything that you can pour oil into that can hold it in and not pour away and she went to borrow from everywhere and the man told her to keep to pour the oil in inside every of those jars and drums that she has borrowed and she kept pouring and pouring and pouring until she asked her son to bring another empty one and that one said oh all the ones we borrowed is finished and, it, and the oil stopped flowing you can imagine you having like say 100 ml of oil and you use the 100 ml of ml of oil to produce say 33,000 liters of oil something like that that was that was a miracle that happened then just because she was able to utilize what was in her hands now that is what informed the question i'm asking you today what is in your hands a lot of us want to want to start want to you have the skill set you've been trained you have the um, interest but you've got to ask yourself where how can i start what can i do with what i have if you've already started and it looks as if you're just um spinning your wheels you're not seeing results where you ought to see results you need to pause and um evaluate take stock of everything you have and, and look through all of it and ask yourself where does your strength lie now that is what I'm going to cover on that Discover Your Strength. I want you to think on that and really ponder. If you've got any questions you can ask, I will help you fine tune it and tailor it. I can listen to what you have to say and help you see the answer to that question, what you have. I'm going to end this broadcast today with my own story. When I wanted to start in 2015, 2014, 2015, 2014, I had, um, in fact, I had less than 20,000 in my account. My plan was, okay, I'd always told myself while I was um, on underpaid employment that, ah, this Lagos state does not, the Lagos state, um, the way, um, I would like to call it, is the fee structure now, or tax structure is, they do not really favor um, business owners, especially if you're just starting now. They will just become, because I can remember that in a month, we could get visits from 
diff up to five different um, tax officials coming to come and check. There's only the time they came with one ridiculous bill, radio bill or something like that. And I was like, we don't have radio, we don't have TV. What are we paying? All of those. So I just kind of made up my mind that if I'm starting out, I am not going to be getting a, 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 an office space. I'd rather work from my house. So that nobody will come and knock on my door and say, Madam, are you working from your house? You must pay so so and so tax. Because I felt you should travel light at the beginning, at least be able to work for a year, two years, so that you can compound, as in let your efforts come together. And then you can now say, Oh, now that you've done this, you've been able to. I'm not saying do not pay your tax. I, when I started, I started paying my VAT. I, 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 in, in the, in the, down the line, I went to register my own personal tax with Lagos State. So I am not adv advocating against paying your tax, but I'm saying that those were my realities then, and those were the decisions I that, were, that I needed to make. So I told myself I was not going to get an office. That, that was one. Secondly, I told myself I was not going to borrow. I was not going to take a loan. I was not going to go beg for money because I'd actually been an, a business person when I was an undergraduate, and the business started with a loan. And from the beginning to the end of that business, it was it was tough because I had to be paying back the loan, whether I like it or not, both to the ISP, both and even the the bank that facilitated the whole business in the beginning. So I knew that loan was a no-no at the beginning. It was just you um, making money for somebody else. Hi, Oluwa Toin, Elizabeth, Morka. Thank you for listening in life. So I told myself, no, I'm not going to do that. Then I asked myself, will I, will I need to hire staff? That also was something I learned as a paid employee. There were times I looked at our office setup and I knew that starting out, and getting um having to having get, getting staff or hiring staff to work with you is going to be a burden if you're not getting business in consistently like get business in every week at least if not every day so i told myself no i'd rather work with teams when i have a job to do i call in my teams call them in and tell them this is what you should handle this is what i said just delegate everybody does theirs you get paid for what you do everybody goes back to their um corners or their locations until the next job comes so those were my those were the decisions i made then those were the things i thought about and so what was in my hands was i had those experience from paid employment i had um i had relationships that had built with vendors that we've used vendors like bedding uh, like um I could, I, no, could, the bedding part was even from momsi's um market runs Vendors like office furniture suppliers, um, carpenters, um, people who sell paints, uh, people who sell interior assets. So I had different relation. Uh, this, this, the, I had cultivated different relationship with different vendors. So all I did was to go meet them and tell them my plan. I'm going to get. I'm going to go out and get jobs. When I get jobs, I need you to please supply what I need for the job. If I can pay you, if I get an upfront to do the job, I, you get paid your money. But if I don't get an upfront, it's going, if it's going to be a pay after delivery kind of um, job, you will have to please give me time to pay you. And I, I, I because it, it was, it was, because I knew that uh, the sustainability and the um, survival of that um, arrangement depends on me holding on to my own end of the bargain, which is pay them when you're paid do not um, cheat them do not hold their money do not use their money to do another business so i stood by those terms and conditions and that was how i started so i'm asking you again look at what you have look at your current situation what do you have in your hands what can you start with what are the resources um, the people in your life the relationships you've cultivated the strengths if you're already in business your strengths are you good are you um are you more concerned about being um, the one who comes up with the creative, who is, crea who is the creative in the group or in your business? You're the one who comes up with the concepts and the design and how to do, you know, maybe your, 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 your strength it does not like in marketing or it doesn't line with, um, with um, advertising, going out physically to go look for clients. You can partner with people around you. You can look for somebody who strength lies in that. There was a time I drew up a proposal. I had a friend and she was so outgoing, very expressive, very assertive. And I spoke with her. In fact, she was even when she, 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 she was uh, very helpful in drawing up those proposals then. And all I did was told her, 
you are going to be the face of the company you're going to be the one to go and talk to the hotel owners talk to the building constructor uh, construction manager or is it a supervisor you're going to be the one to go market our this um, um deal that we have the two the, the 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 arrangement we had we had made an arrangement any deal that pushed through from any of your legwork you get a percentage out of it and it worked well so i have given you a tip today i've shown you um one of the things that worked for me at the beginning what do you have in your hands i cannot wait to read your your reply i cannot wait to read your your whatever it is you <laughs> all right uh so i'm a good bible scholar keep it girl i'm enjoying your presentation thank you Shil. i will see thank you so much so uh that is all i have for you today i've actually shoot i've shoot out of my time today but we are still good it's still 17 minutes after four so we're still good uh, just two minutes um extra i hope you enjoyed today's presentation because i enjoyed presenting it also i hope to read your comments in uh, your your answers in the comments and like i said earlier if you want me to help you look into your business idea or your business and by business i mean you you, you want you're about to start or you have already started or you're thinking of starting but you are confused and you want to answer this question or you just want me to help you fine tune what you have in your head this period that i'm doing so you call yourself an interior decorator i am hoping to help you for free all you need to do is just comment and we get it done together all right so thank you shown thank you um toy for joining in live if you're catching the replay thank you also for catching the replay i'll see you 2 p.m tomorrow not 4 p.m today i was out that was why it was 4 p.m so see you 2 p.m tomorrow and um do have a lovely evening bye for now